feature Senator Will Brownsberger from the Suffolk and Middlesex District, my own personal state senator here who has been advocating for the vulnerable users law in Massachusetts for several sessions and helped get enact two's traffic fatalities across the finish line. Um, I know Will, he has ridden across the country. He's a strong supporter of bicycling safety on all fronts. And as always, it's a pleasure, Will, to have you. And I'm excited to hear about some of the work happening on Beacon Hill. And we'll also have Tommy Vitolo, a rep of the 15th Norfolk District in Brookline, whom I know from uh, graduate school days at Boston University, um, who also bikes to work whenever possible and believes that everyone who does should be supported through a commuter benefit. And so we'll be able to talk a little bit about how his work at the, um, the tax level has been supporting your ride into work. And we'll also feature Rep. Michelle Socolo of the 15th Middlesex District out in Lexington. She is a lover of bike trails and who personally saw the benefit of their uh, growth in her work as she helped with the Assabet River Rail Trail in Hudson and how it rejuvenated its downtown. So I'm very excited to hear about the Trails Caucus. Um, so with that, I'll pass it off to Kristen to lead us into our talk with the legislators. Perfect. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, Senator Brownsberger, uh, Rep. Patolo, and Rep. Chicolo for joining us tonight. We know you all are super busy, so we really appreciate your time and uh, look forward to getting into some of the uh, bikey details with you all. Um, so my first question is for you, uh, Senator Brownsberger. Can you briefly describe an act to reduce traffic fatalities and how the vulnerable user language is a transformative change in road roadway behavior on our public roadways? Sure. Uh, no, thank you so much for having me and Mass Bike and Galen. Thank you and the whole board. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Uh, you've been a huge part of moving forward bike safety. Uh, over for many years now, and it's an issue I've been involved in for my entire tenure on the legislature as a cyclist since since 2007. Um, so th this the the, the uh, vulnerable road user bill is really part of a, a larger agenda. One part of which was the hands free cell phone. Uh, the second part of which is the automated enforcement, which still remains outstanding. And the third part of this is this is this bill. So what are the elements of this bill? Number one, and this is the easiest one to understand, um, makes a ton of sense. Let's not allow motorists or you know large vehicles weighing thousands of pounds to go too close to vulnerable road users. Bicyclists and, and road, uh, the concept of vulnerable road users is defined very inclusively to include um, not only cyclists but pedestrians and road workers and roller skaters. Anybody's anybody who's legitimately on the road. Motorists should stay at least four feet from them as they pass. So that's rule number one. And I'm grateful to MassDOT for getting, starting to get the signage out, starting to do the public education. I'm grateful to MassBike for being part of that educational effort. Number two, uh, truck safety. I think many of us know, uh, I certainly have the perception that the majority of urban crashes involving cyclists do involve large vehicles. Uh, typically trucks, uh, sometimes because they swing sideways in ways that cyclists, especially less experienced cyclists, do not understand. And so one of the things this bill does is require trucks to have side guards so the cyclists will not end up under the wheels when they make this they miss a mistake with it near a truck or a truck makes a mistake near them. Um, and the other is more cross mirrors so that the trucks can see down in front of them. We had a tragic accident where a, a big truck accelerated right over a cyclist who happened to be right in front of the truck uh, when, when the light turned green. Um, and that's just a visibility issue. So mirrors and side guards, those will apply to trucks that are owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or owned by contractors with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's as far as we thought we could go in this bill. Over time, uh, we, what we're really doing is participating in a national movement to create truck side guard and safety legislation so that ultimately we can have federal legislation that covers trucks registered in any state. Next, the next element, we've got the safe passing distance, the truck safety, and there, there's a complicated set of provisions related to allowing, making it easier for municipalities to lower speed limits. Municipalities can lower speed limits to 25 miles an hour from the statutory default of 30 uh, in thickly settled areas. Um, the, but there have been some a couple of uh, limitations to that. One of them is state-owned roads. The other is 
roads where a special speed has been set uh, by after a traffic study. Those state-owned roads and special speed, we create speed zones, we created procedures uh, that still preserve uh, statewide control over those decisions on those cases, but basically to find a, a streamlined procedure for municipalities to try to make changes um, on those roads, which are not just their vanilla roadways where the speed limit was 30 and they can lower it down to 35. Speed limits, a little complicated. Next, and this is what I'm really excited about. It's a little bit dry, but vulnerable user crash reporting. That's something we badly need um, because it's so important to really figure out how to prioritize. I have a perception that the big kinds of crashes are on high speed rural roads and on, and you know, they could involve a motorist. I mean, excuse me, any kind of vehicle going to going fast and then in urban areas with trucks. Well, let's see if that's what really breaks down and, and, and let the data guide us to additional improvements for safety for everybody. So that, that's something that I know MassDOT is working on and I talked to the tra head statewide traffic safety engineer and she's developing the forms. So we'll start to accumulate better data over a few years. Uh, the last major element of the bill is the idea that motorcyclists should have, uh, at night, should have a red light on the back not just a reflector, but active rear lighting. I think everybody agrees that's a good safety idea, but we want to make sure that it wouldn't be a cause of people being arrested just for that. And we've made that, uh, you can't just stop a bicyclist just for that. And we also protected cyclists from losing, uh, from increased liability uh, as a result of not wearing, of not having the lights. So thank you to Mass Bike. Thank you to my colleagues in the legislature, as you mentioned, uh, Representative Moran, Representative Strauss, and uh, Senator Crichton, all been key in getting this act over the finish line. And of course, Tommy and, and everybody, all the other people that uh, care about safety. It's a team in the legislature. We're making progress. And I hope the next place we can go is automated enforcement. And I'll let others talk about that. Thank you. Terrific. Uh, thank you so much, Senator. And I know when I first saw those four foot passing signs on the road, I was giving a cheer and I can't stop smiling every time I see one of those. And I know a lot of these are really going to help municipalities as they try to make it safer for bikers, walkers, vulnerable users and for cars. So this benefits everybody on the road. So um, we will have less remembrances, hopefully, on that uh, International Day of Remembrance. So thank you so much uh, for that. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Rep. Fatolo, and if um, you can address, uh, Representative, uh, through the bicycling benefit tax deduction, how can we get more people biking to work? Yeah, so bicyclists deserved a tax cut and they got one. Uh, here's what we did. There was on the books a law that said you can deduct up to 700, you can, um, you can, it's not a deduction, it is a, I'm losing the word, uh, credit, no, Rep. Socolo, jump in, you got it. Credit, yeah. It's a credit, right? Um, $750, but you were only allowed to use monthly or weekly MBTA passes and all of your tolls, all of your fast lane or easy pass or whatever it's called, right? And I said, well, wait a minute. First of all, what about daily riders of the MBTA who don't commute every day? They don't need a monthly pass. It doesn't pencil out for them. They should get a tax reduction too. And what about all the users of the RTAs, the buses that aren't serving the Boston Metro? They should get a reduction too, and they weren't. And also, what about the cyclists? I was thinking along the line of bike share specifically, that feels a lot like public mass transit. And then Galen came in and said, hey, think bigger. And I said, I'm happy to think bigger, bud. We go back a long way. And he said, what about the people who spend money on their own bikes? They're not jamming up the roads. They're not polluting the air either. So we put them in. I didn't think we'd get that part, but we got it. And here's what it means. What it means is starting in 2023, when you fill out your taxes by April 15, 2024, you add up all the money you spent on tolls, all the money you spent on any mass transit in Massachusetts, all the money you spent on bike share, and all the money you spent on your bicycle. And you get that number up to 750 or higher. So you get the maximum reduction, um, which is would be up to $750 off of your income, right? And that goes back to January 1, 2023, before we even pass the law, right? So this is great. Um, money in your pockets and you deserve it. So go ahead and get that money. Here's the other half of it though. People say, well, how are you going to prove it? 
The answer is you're going to prove it when the auditor asks you for the information. So when they ask for it, have it. Here's why. The total actual dollar value of this caps out at $37.50 a year. So I'm telling you, don't be a tax cheat over $37.50. Pay what you owe, do it the right way, right? If you only spent $487, then only put down $487, right? Uh, do it the right way. So that's the story. It's a great story. There's a second part of it, though, that I can't resist putting a plug in. Representative Owens um, filed, I joined along with him, Bill H. 1929, which is related. It says, if you've got 50 or more employees, you've got to do this on the pre-tax side. You've got to allow your employees to do it um, through their taxes, through their paycheck, rather, instead of on the back end, which means you get that reduction sooner, you get that benefit sooner, um, and it encourages people, uh, more people to take advantage of that. And so we got the tax part done, but we still want to get H1929 across the finish line so that this good word gets spread to more people, more efficiently reduce those barriers and get more people taking advantage of it. 3750, and I'm just saying, if you made a contribution to Mass Bike for $37.50, because that's what you're not going to pay in taxes next year, that would be a reasonable thing. Just putting that out there. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative. Um, really appreciate that. So yeah, start spending those dollars on your bikes. And it's really great to hear about the the ability for the corporations as well, um, or the businesses over 50 people. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to um, Rep. Ticolo. If you could, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, reviving the Trails Caucus. I know you all have gotten so much great work done already. So if you could talk a little bit about that and the work of the caucus to support all these fantastic trails that we're lucky to have in the Commonwealth and, and the new ones coming up. Thank you, Kristen and Galen and all of the folks at Mass Bike. It's super exciting to be here tonight. I'm so impressed that you have 166 people on this call this evening. I've really enjoyed watching the growth of Mass Bike over the years. And as Galen mentioned, I've been involved in biking for decades myself, um, back when I first spearheaded the first phase of the Assabet River Rail Trail. Uh, so my latest uh, project at Galen's suggestion and Eric Barassa, and Joel Barrera, some of the, fo the folks that came to me and encouraged me to consider um, reviving the Trails Caucus. It was originally created back by, uh, by Representative Chris Walsh of Framingham, who unfortunately passed away too prematurely. Um, but it was my honor to be able to bring the group back together to get the caucus going again. We have 46 members already. This is the first year of the, the rekindled caucus, and we have almost a quarter of the legislature bicameral and bipartisan, which is super exciting. I think it's a testimony to the fact that there are so many great trails in all of our districts and legislators understand how important and helpful trails are to our local economy, for our health, et cetera. So um, when we launched last fall, our, one of our first activities was to bring together the advocacy community and hear from all of you to get some ideas about the types of work we should be doing. And then we had a formal kickoff meeting in January to establish a, a statement of purpose and a work plan. Uh, very simply put, the Massachusetts Legislative Trails Caucus works to educate legislators and the public on the community benefit of trails and advocates to advance measures in the legislature and, and executive branch that support their creation and their maintenance. So some of the functional activities that we're doing um, and that we will continue to do, testifying obviously on legislation, testifying on administrative and regulatory hearings, um, producing written advocacy letters and emails, weighing in on the budget and the capital investment plan, that's very important, and hosting educational forums, sponsoring site visits, bike rides and trail walks, et cetera. So uh, in our first year, we also worked to establish some legislative priorities. I will tell you that initially it was hard to figure out what we should be prioritizing as a trails caucus. There's lots of great bike legislation and pedestrian legislation, but things that are specifically for trails was a little bit harder to find. One of the reasons we wanted to get the trails caucus going again is because there was great work done by the last administration in the mass trails program. 
And we wanted to make sure that the funding and the energy around that uh, reorganized effort at the executive branch was, con was going to be continued. And so very early on in the Healy Driscoll administration, we sent a series of advocacy letters to our new secretary um, and to our commissioner, Commissioner Arrigo and um, Secretary Tepper. Uh, and the governor and lieutenant governor asking them to make sure they don't forget the trails program and the uh, mass trails in the capital investment plan and making sure that they continue the and increase the level of funding. We asked for an increased level of funding. So we will continue to be doing that work throughout the budget, um, throughout uh, the, attend the upcoming environmental bond bill, which may not happen this session, might be the beginning of next session, but we recognize there's so um, much funding for trails in the, those bond bills. And sometimes there's opportunities in economic development bond bills and elsewhere. And it's important to have a voice that is cohesive, that can make one concise ask when these when these major bills go through so that it um, we signal to ways and means in both the House and the Senate that these are our priorities and they're important. Three pieces of legislation that, that I did file that the Trails Caucus loosely supports and advocates for. Um, I will start with H769. This was a Senator Comerford bill on the Senate side. She developed it with all of you and I co-filed it on the House side. That is an act expanding access to trails for people of all abilities. Really terrific bill, very exciting hearing. I thank all of you who came out and testified because there really were a lot of people and there's great energy behind this bill to catalog and, and um, research the state of trails, both um, on, and, um, on and off uh, pavement trails um, to determine how accessible they are and what improvements need to be made. So looking for data collection and a commission that will make recommendations on how to improve accessibility to trails for all users. Very exciting bill. The other two bills, H4000, an act, a local option um, municipal excise tax on unused utility corridors, essentially says that if you have a utility corridor in your community, that is not being offered for public use for trail access, that the municipality can uh, levy a fee or tax on you. So it's really trying to be an incentive to get um, those utility corridors to um, have arrangements with the municipality to have access. And then a related bill, H3158, an act establishing the Municipal Utility Corridor Public Access Program, directs uh, the Department of Public Utilities to come up with a uniform access license agreement that municipalities can use so they don't have to reinvent the wheel every time so that they can create those trail connections. So that's some of the legislation that we've been pursuing and um, we are still getting off the ground. We're still hoping to do some more site visits. So if you have a trail you want us to come visit, we'd love to hear from you. I also spoke at the um, uh, Golden Shoe at the, help me out here. Uh, Okay, oh, the Golden Spike. Golden Spike, thank you. Uh, we talked about the Trails Caucus there and had some great feedback from folks. Um, and there have been a few other activities that we've done. But as I said, this was our first year and we are looking for input and, and ideas of how we can be even more effective going into our second year. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you so much, Rep. Tricolo, and amazing all the work that you all have gotten done in this first year. And Thanks so much for the support of the Mass Trails program. I'm sure almost everyone here has benefited from some trail that's benefited from Mass Trails. So uh, really thrilled to have that continuing going. Um, and we have um, a little bit more time left. So we are so appreciative to you all for being really amazing champions for biking in the Commonwealth. And we know that you have other colleagues that share your passion, um, but we're curious to hear um, from each one of you, you know, what can we do as Mass Bike, folks who really care about biking, to get more bike champions on Beacon Hill? We know a lot of folks have to drive, unfortunately, um, and we want to create, obviously, more uh, ways for people to bike. I think you just um, hit some of it on the head there, Rep Ticolo, by inviting people to ribbon cuttings, but would love to hear from each one of you, and we can start with you, um, Senator Brownsberger, of how do we uh, get more colleagues joining you um, on Beacon Hill, uh, sharing the perspectives of cyclists and really supporting more biking in the Commonwealth? Uh, I'm a big, thank you. I'm a big believer that the most effective thing that it's a really can change a legislator's mind is for a constituent, it's gotta be a constituent, to arrange a meeting with them, and most legislators will meet with a constituent who asks for a meeting, 
and who tells a personal story and makes an ask motivated legitimately by that story. You know, this will make a difference in my life. One life is usually enough to motivate a legislator to do something. I mean, one good reason why it's important to me uh, from a constituent is enough to get things going. So I, I think, you know, I think that Mass Bikes leadership is important in focusing the asks. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we'll, we'll focus some on the automated enforcement space. Uh, but then, but then it's about getting people into each legislator's office, telling a personal story, and say, and talking to how this bill would make a difference. Um, and you got to figure out what that looks like. But that's that's the frame I would offer. And by the way, I'm just while while I got the uh, mic here, I'm just going to throw into the chat an explanation of that vulnerable road users I, bill I was talking about. I, I think the senators got it right um, for sure. Um, go ahead and elect great bicycle um, advocates or people who understand the importance. Um, but I think um, great bicycle legislators are made, not born. And you can make your rep um, better on bicycle issues by reaching out to your rep as a neighbor and acting neighborly. Hey, let's have a conversation. I want to show you my experience. I want to tell you about this thing that happened to my kid to my spouse, to me, um, here's a particular bill that I think would help. And here's why, get a cup of coffee, get an ice cream, right? Whatever it is, um, talk to, you got two, you got, a, you got a rep and you got a Senator, reach out to each of them. Um, most, in my experience, most legislators, like they're not hard to find. I, I give my cell phone number out to people all the time. I just put it in the chat. <laughs> call me, right? Like I put it on mute right now because I'm on a I'm on a call. But um, reps aren't hard to find. Senators aren't hard to find. Reach out and talk to yours, um, and and understand that um, you get more with kindness than with negative emotion and conversation. So, right, the goal is to win. The goal is to have a better outcome. Be your legislator's buddy. Don't be their enemy. Uh, you'll find you'll get more that way. You'll be more likely to have a successful outcome. Um, that's my experience, at least. Uh, so take it for what it's worth. And call me, just not right now. <laughs> I'll jump in and say that um, we have a great participant, uh, participation in the Trails Caucus, but I'm going to just give you the list of legislators. Make sure you check to see if yours has joined. And if you do have a trail in your community or a bike facility, make sure you invite your rep and senator down to tour it, take some pictures with them, um, you know, do a little social media around it. Reps and senators like to be um, noticed and, and appreciated. Sometimes um, if, you know, if you're not inviting them to the ribbon cuttings and those kinds of events, they start to feel like it doesn't matter that they might have helped you get an earmark or helped fund to get a grant, written support letters if they're not included in the success stories when the projects are unveiled and, and opened. Um, it's a little easy to uh, to feel overlooked. So um, it certainly helps to get them to plug in and um, and participate in the community over these types of projects. Perfect. Well, Thank you all so much. And um, we have 165 folks here. So if each one of you reaches out to your representative, think of what a huge impact that will be. Um, as you can see, these folks are very friendly people. They would love to join you for a bike ride and an ice cream afterwards. So don't be shy, you know, use your voice. And um, thank you all so much. Uh, representative. We really appreciate um, all you do for biking and so many other issues um, that you care about in the comments. Well, thank you so much.